about this. And I want to find out what are your feelings between the term open source versus free? Well, um, I proposed the term open source originally because in 1997 I observed that the term free software had bad karma. If you, if you said free software to a business person or your typical technology journalist, the connotations were not good. They, they, would, they would think of communism and bad things like that. And so where'd you go from there? You realized they didn't like that term. How has it affected the open source world? Well, what I decided we needed was a, uh, as a I, I hate these marketing terms, but they're the only ones that are appropriate. What we needed to do was rebrand the product. It, it, it's ugly for technical people to have to think this way, but mostly, unfortunately, most of the world doesn't run on rationality and good technical decisions. It runs on what kind of image you can present, what kind of... Uh, it's not true. It's not I mean, true. I'm not... Believe me, uh, balloon bounce working in Windows and on Linux, as far as sound's concerned, has nothing to do with the image. Okay, I've heard enough of him. Let's just see now. But Stallman can be a little bit overbearing at times. He's a good guy. If I ever met him, I'd shake his hand. I'd be as nice as anybody to him. I think he's done a lot of good things in the world. Even Raymond's done a lot of good things. You know, so uh, you know, I have my complaints, but I'm not trying to bag him. Let's, let's see what Stallman wants to say. And there, at one point, the interviewer Richard, gets, welcome. gets a little uh, uncomfortable. You uh, describe yourself as being, in 1983, the founder. Now, I'll stop. Yeah, I'll stop. Pause there for a second. Stallman's personality is so strong that it almost shines through when you deal with the Red Hat and Fedora distribution. So keep that in mind, what he says. And... And then, and then I'll show you a web page with uh, Fedora and using Adobe Flash, and then you'll 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 kind of put things together. But this is like this is like it's like you're talking to Aristotle here, or in the free software community, Aristotle and, and you know Socrates. We just we just heard from Socrates, and here's Aristotle. So these guys have a lot of influence of the free software movement. Exactly, what is all that? The first thing you need. To make a computer do anything is an operating system. If you haven't got an operating system, it won't run at all. And at that time, all the operating systems for modern computers were proprietary software. That means non-free software. The users were kept divided and helpless. <laughs> okay. Oh, divided and helpless. Okay. I have no programming skills. I have none. Except for bash shell scripting, and that is using other people's programs by automating the command line. I'm still helpless whether I have the source code or not. Most people are still helpless whether they have the source code or not. So, to most people, what he's saying here is nonsense. Unfortunately, to him it's not. He's a very sincere guy, and he has a he's logically consistent, I'll say that he's logically consistent, and he doesn't bullshit you, he tells you exactly what he thinks, what his end goals are, and he, there is some benevolence behind what he does, I'm not saying Raymond is absent benevolence, but um, he's definitely had, he has benevolent intentions, and, but the problem is he kind of sees every other user in the world as having the skills and the ability and the intelligence that he has, and frankly, not everybody has that. And so his idea of the way software should be used in the world doesn't really scale that well. And his influence has, in my mind, in the way his ideas don't scale to the rest of the world, has, has actually been a damper on Linux. Linus Torvalds has some contentions with him, too. He, he thinks that Richard Stallman wants to tell people how to live their lives, and, and Linus doesn't want to do that. He just wants to to um, let you know, Linus was okay with putting DRM in the kernel because he's not going to prevent anybody from using it, and if you don't turn it on, then that's your choice. He, he leaves up to choice, but Stallman tends to go out and browbeat people for doing things that aren't within his moral code, and that's the condition Linus has with him. So, I was an operating system developer, and I said, I'm going to change this. I couldn't convince countries 
governments to change these disgusting laws. I couldn't change, convince companies to change their policies, but I could write software. So I said, I'm going to write another operating system with the help of anyone I can convince to help me. And this operating system is going to respect users' freedom. It's going to give people a way to use computers in freedom. I mean, he's talking about freedom. See, yeah, there's, he, it's a good thing he's using the term freedom there. I wish they would call themselves the Freedom Software Foundation because freedom, what he means, and, and there is also another counterpoint and contention about the term freedom here, but nonetheless, um, what he means by freedom is the ability to modify and change the program's behavior to, what, to have it do what you want it to do. So, you know, given that you have the skills and the time to do this, which I have neither of, um, theoretically, the world would be a better place if everybody had those skills and those abilities and they can do what they wanted to completely with their, with their computer. And Stallman shines great mostly when you get a program like, say, Adobe 9 that wants to phone home every time you open up the program and requires you to go out and buy a brand new computer that's more powerful than a Pentium 4 just because if you don't, you'll have annoying delays because it wants to phone home every time you open up a PDF file. In that, in that sense, I'm more in line with Stallman. And in a lot of ways, I am in more in line with Stallman with Raymond because I think it's more honest as to what his intentions are, and I don't see a bad result of having his intentions played out so long as if there's enough people uh, to contribute in a collaborative way to, um, to have a good and stable operating system. I haven't seen that yet so far, but, you know, if the number of people that actually use Linux doubled, um, you know, it's a catch-22, who's going to use it if it doesn't work right? But uh, the more people that are actually using it, the easier it is for everybody. It's it really Linux is a collaborative use of Linux and it is a collaborative product. Now, Stallman would um, lecture me and say that I should be calling it GNU Linux and not Linux because I'm not focusing on freedom. But before you could even even get to the point where you're worried about freedom, you have to be able to use that freedom and. Um, you have to be able to use the freedom, and then beyond that, um, even more basic than that, you have to be able to use the software if you don't have the ability to use the freedom, and it just isn't there, and that is the problem. That is the main problem. And and there's got to be some quality checking. There's absolutely no quality checking. Let's, okay, let's go on. And this operating system, I gave the name GNU. So in January 1984, I started developing the GNU operating system. And by the early 90s, we had almost all the pieces necessary. But one important piece was missing, which was the kernel, the, the component, the program that allocates the computer's resources to all the other programs that you use. And at that point, Linus Torvalds wrote a kernel called Linux, and in 1992, he made it free software. So at that point, Linux filled the last gap in the GNU system, and the combination, which was basically GNU with Linux added, started becoming popular, and so we achieved our goal. We made it possible to use a computer in freedom. But as this combined GNU... Okay, now he doesn't get into the, the thing here, and I'm going to make this point very strongly. Um, in fact, I think if I could find Stolman here uh, in Revolution OS. Oh, wait. Probably if I just look up GNU Herd. Maybe I'll get lucky. What? <sighs> Fart. Oh, he'll. Um, maybe this is it? Issues. No, we can no. talk offline. No, no, no. Um, okay, so I'm going to, while I look for this, hopefully I could be cohesive enough when I talk. Basically, Stallman will get in, in the movie Revolution OS, he talks about why the kernel, they weren't able to get the kernel working in Linus Woods. And his uh, Andy Tannenbaum, who I think is a very intelligent guy, is going to have 
a lot of contention with what I'm going to have to say. But again, I agree with Linus. And uh, there was there's a famous uh, debate between Linus and Andy Tannenbaum about microkernels versus monolithic kernels. But, oh God, you, you Stallman does such a good job ex explaining. I might just stop this right here, find it, and then start my next one.